Hi, this is uh, MXUX. This is a video from a guy that's running a channel called Facts for Specs. I'll put the link in the uh, description of the video. You know, this is a really great channel, um, and he covers uh, EVs and he covers Specs, and he's got some really good insights. I recommend the channel. But anyway, I will put a link to the channel in the description he went to this uh, show which was in long beach which is the act expo and i did not know about this show uh but um anyway um everyone was there helion workhorse this is all about um the alternative energy space and transportation this is the lordstown exhibition which is they got one little they got one little uh screen over here showing the website basically and this is a this is a beta okay and this was posted in august but i think this is from may circa may 2021 so this i believe the um production vehicle isn't going to be quite like this i think this is a pre-production vehicle certainly most likely a beta i think i'm going to go alpha beta and uh, p p production vehicle but anyway it might it may even be an alpha but anyway i just wanted to show the footage it's you know it's rare to get footage of this truck so let's just go through this and pause at certain sets so there it is this is a very low rent <laughs> display i mean if you look at these other places these other trucks and so forth um the, the amount of money that was spent on the uh, the trade show was, you know, a hundred times this. But anyway, um, uh, I think that reflects in their Spartan finances and uh, so on. And their, you know, I think they wanted to make a presence. But, uh, you know, they got the SEC after them, DOJ. You know, how are they going to have somebody that, you know, what are they going to say? Somebody's going to get arrested for telling them how many horsepower the truck has. Anyway, let's play this. Okay, I'm going to keep the sound off here. And you're walking up here, and um, I think that's a pretty good view of the side of the truck. I like the way the truck sits low to the ground, personally. The Ford and every other EV, the Rivian, they're up really high. High center of gravity versus this low center of gravity. Anyway, let's move forward here. And uh, there's the wheel motor. Now this, I believe this has a cover on it. I'm not sure. I think the cover's been removed for this display. And I think that these might be battery charging cables for the 12 volt battery. And I'd also like to add that these lights here are not uh, the production lights. Uh, none of the lights are the production lights that are shown in uh, the commercials or the TV spots that have been recorded and so forth. So uh, keep that in mind. And again, I think this might, uh, it's certainly a beta. But anyway, I think that's what this is. And I do believe this is supposed to have a cover on it. But let's move forward. And there's the frunk. Now, you know, when you get a look at that frunk, This thing is is um, pretty uh, pretty. Let's just slow this down a little bit here. The front is pretty big. Look, look how big the trunk the front is. It's it's big as the mega trunk, mega flump, whatever this whatever the Ford has. And I don't know if this is going to be exposed like this. I think this is a bait. I think this is a fuse box. Maybe I'm not sure. Probably not going to be in the final truck. And there's the hood. And as you can see, that's quite a large front. Really big. I think people are underestimating that. And again, I think there should be a cover on that, likely, or so on. And uh, this is a special color, if this is the color that was developed for fleets. It's supposed to be easy to keep clean, or it's a unique white evidently and uh, remember this is a spartan truck this is the fleet model but now i'm going to pause it right here this is a kill switch 
All right, so this is this is beta, maybe alpha. Okay, this is this is not a current model, but you get a look at the seats here. They're comparable to that Ford Pro. Um, and let's see where he goes here. And um, there's the four door and um, the black and white paint scheme. And you can see that the door panels are, you know, typical, very much like the Ford Pro. I mean, you know, this is a work truck. Those are work truck panels, not a luxury interior. Now, this is, I found very interesting. And again, I don't believe, I don't think this is right at all. Uh, if you look at the Lordstown commercials, the the actual commercials they've done or the pull-off with the Ford, these are not the lights. Anyway, but they obviously were driving. They, they probably drove this to the show. They got the kill switch on it. Anyway, and again, you see this light. I do not believe that these are the lights. I think they these are just some cheater lights they put on there uh, so that they could drive this thing on the road. My opinion, maybe I'm wrong. I don't think so. I, I don't believe those are lights. They're not. They're not like anything we've seen before. And there's a trailer hitch, and uh, the back of the truck looks great. And again, these are different than the uh, what I've seen in the production. I don't believe this is going to be the arrangement. And I think these are some uh, temporary lights that were put in place. Now, this is interesting. I. Um, I just want to let this go through here. I think the truck looks great. I do like the low ride height. I mean, this makes it more practical for putting things in the bed as well. If you're working, the last thing you want is a big, big jacked up truck and, you know, trying to load it up from wheelbells or whatever. Now, I'm going to stop this here. Again, this is an alpha, beta, who knows. But if you look at this, it looks like a bed liner, okay? This uh, this could be the bed. I uh, propose an option in this truck for um, you know for the commercial version, uh, not the fleet version of a composite bed that the GM offers, and this has Lordstown printed in it. But this, I believe, is the composite bed, and it looks like this is going to come standard on the fleet truck. This is a great bed. It saves about, I don't know, 200 pounds of weight uh, for the truck versus a steel bed. And it won't rust and it won't ding and it won't bend, you know, like the aluminum Ford bed. So this is great. I did not know. Now I'm assuming, that, I mean, if you look here, and again, this is unfinished. This is a beta. I think everybody's going to probably criticize this, but you have to realize this is certainly not a finished truck here. And again, you can see that that's a um, that's a that's that's the uh, uh, the bed liner uh, or the bed. It's not a bed liner. It's the bed actually. And then uh, this is the interior. And someone was talking about no seat room, no leg room for the passengers in the back. Well, we don't know how far back these front seats are or what the setup is on that. But this is very much like the Ford Pro. It's very much the same layout with the center console and the fence and all that stuff, you know. And again, there's the door panel. I don't think the door panel looks bad, personally. There's pockets in there for storing stuff. And easy to keep clean. Now, here's the interior. Now, again, this is a kill switch, all right? There's a wire coming off of the back of this running under the dash, which, you know, this is definitely a beta, okay? So this is not a finished truck, but it gives you a good idea of what the interior. There were some comments that uh, that this looks like it's just stuck on the dash. I love this. And I said in another video, if you stack these screens one one on top of the other, this is more square inches than the Ford has in it with its main 12-inch screen. I bet that's you know I bet that's you know a quarter or a third larger. So there's actually more room there. And again, here's a kill switch. We're going to move forward. I like how this, if this, I don't know if this is going to stay, but this shows an open space on the floorboard under the dash with this console ending here. That would be great. That would provide so much legroom. I think that's fantastic. I don't know if that's going to follow through. A lot of times they make these bigger. 
But if that's open, wow, that's great. Anyway, we're moving in here, and again, you see the kill switch there. And there's a good look at the dash, and here's what I'm talking about. I think that's a wire coming down. It's hard to tell. Not to, I think this was shot with a phone. This is your gear selector here. Okay. I think that's probably going to stay in some form. And I understand that these, uh, this type of gear selector automatically puts the truck in park if the driver gets out. Uh, anyway. And let's see here. There's a good look at that dash panel. I don't know. Maybe that's not a cord. Maybe that's just a crease in the console. Hard to say. Anyway, you get through here, and there's there's a good look at the dash. I think that's a great, you know, people are commenting, oh, it looks like, I think it's fantastic. I think it's a great, great dash. I, I really like it. I think it, you got a good, you don't have a big, like the Ford has that clunky, you know, vestigial uh, hump there with the fake chrome around it. You know, this is this is what it should be, in my opinion. Anyway, and there's that gear selector again, and there's the individual climate controls, I believe. And this is your display panel for your driver, and then this is the touchscreen, and I don't know what they got up on there right now. Maybe somebody can mention that in the comments. And if we... Now again, there's that kill switch, QR code there for more information on the truck. Love how that console ends and there's so much legroom. Now I want to stop right there. If you look right here, this looks like composite to me. This looks like the same stuff the truck bed's made out of. I could be wrong. But you know, the, the lightweight nature of this truck, you know, you could assume that they were using a lot of this composite in it. I know that uh, the workhorse van had a ton of composite. It's, it's all composite, basically, of some type or another. And Burns was involved, you know, with all of this. And I'm sure he's got a ton of composite in here to keep the weight down. And again, this kill switch is, this tells you this is an alpha or maybe a beta, but probably an alpha. You know, this is just a rough approximation, I think. Anyway, there's a good view in the cab. I think it's a spacious cab. I really like it. And I love this opening down here in front of the thing. And I think the dash looks great. And, the, and uh, facts for specs. I want to give this guy credit. I mean, this guy, he's, uh, he's done a lot of great videos. He's a, uh, you should check him out, facts for specs. And again, he goes over, if you're a Helion fan, I do not follow Helion. He goes over uh, Nicola, Helion. Uh, there's a lot of uh, really good footage here if you're curious to see, uh, and, and Workhorse as well. So um, anyway, there's, their, there's the um, display again, some different displays in the uh, Endurance. I think that's a great dash. I think, you know, there we go. And... Um, uh, you know, Steve Burns was a software guy, and I'm sure, you know, he worked on the telemetrics and the um, the whole control system. He was involved in everything, so I'm sure it's, there's something there. But anyway, that, that's a basic look at the truck. And uh, like I say, I think this is a alpha or a beta. And let me just see if I can go to this guy's channel. Um, and show you uh, some of this stuff on here just to show you. This is the channel Facts for Specs, and he's got everything down here. Uh, he's got the, uh, the bus companies, he's got uh, Oshkosh, but I mean Nikola, uh, Bollinger, so anyway. Uh, a very interesting cat. Good channel. Anyway, I thought that was some interesting footage. Okay, this is MXUX. I just wanted to show this because I know people are going to be squawking about those tail lights. This, I believe, is a tail light configuration for at least one model of the Endurance. So uh, that beta or alpha uh, does not show these tail lights or side marker lights. I just wanted to put this up to let you know that. Uh, those, I'm sure, were stuck on there, so they make that thing street legal. 
from uh, Orange County to Long Beach, it's not a long drive. I'm sure they drove that truck there. Anyway, I just wanted to show you this is a much nicer treatment. Maybe an option, but I do believe that this is intended to be the final look of the truck. All right? All right. This is MXUX. I'm going to try to start both of these videos side by side so that you can compare the two trucks. I have the Ford F-150 Pro fleet truck on the left, and this is an earlier. The Endurance is much more polished now and better looking now, I think, but this is an early. This is the best video I have comparing the two trucks, and uh, I'm just going to pause that right there and try and move this ahead a little bit. Now he's just going over the outside of the truck and indicating the differences between the... Uh, now this is a big difference here. These are much uh, smaller tires than the Endurance. The Endurance has bigger wheels and, uh, and bigger tires. And these are 20 and these are 18. And I think you can really see the difference there. They need this for rolling resistance, I believe. Whereas the Endurance, no such need. All right, let me just try to synchronize these a little. Uh, it gives you a good look and feel for that. Now, I'll pause this a minute. Let's see if we can move this forward a little bit. Again, uh, that was some... Uh, and then again, here are the tires. And he makes a point of talking about the tires. I think the tires are too small and too narrow. I made that point earlier. Uh, this is the charge times. So we've gone over that. And this is... This is where he's talking about the independent rear suspension. There's the arms, and there's the, the axle, and there's the motor, which the Endurance, of course, has a solid axle. And... Uh, we're at the interior and the endurance let's just pause that uh right there now they're uh they got the flag there which was on the endurance baja 250. let's try and move ahead a little bit here all right here he is coming in the interior so you can compare these two interiors um i think uh let's pause that right there you know, you got, the, you got the center, you got the center. This is a selector knob. They got the drop-down thing. It's a little more finish, perhaps. Uh, steering wheel, steering wheel. Now, this is the center screen real estate on this F-150. And then they've got a small, phony little fake dial gauge in this giant bezel here. The Endurance puts all of this real estate in one long screen. If they stacked all these screens together, it would be the same size as this screen. Maybe bigger, I'm thinking, actually. But instead of having one giant block, it's split into four or five different screens. I like the design better. As well, I like the more digital nature of the display of the uh, Endurance uh, speedometer and so forth. But here's the climate controls. Uh, this is something for a clipboard I think cup holders very similar let's just play the Ford here and the vinyl seats are comparable as I said we have a different dash layout and uh, these are comparable and uh, comparable center console there's no workspace on that either and uh, let's just see if we can move ahead here now he's going to get in this here. Now, <clears throat> again, that th this screen is comparable. I think if we stacked all these on, it would be probably bigger than that. And uh, this is the Lordstown Ford comparison here. And again, you're seeing the same kind of center console array. And um, I just want to go over this. These are the day. I hate this kind of cluster where they have this big plastic bezel and this cheap font. I don't know why they have the worst font in the world for these uh, for these things. And you can see how how much nicer the endurance uh, is here as far as that uh, 
as that control panel goes. I would much rather look at this than this. I don't know why they do this with the horrible fonts and the, this is so much sleeker and better without the, uh, the that large, that, that big giant bezel taking up all the visual space in the room. Okay, so let's let that let's let the endurance play here. So you can compare them side by side. Very comparable in every every respect. Uh, again, bigger wheels, bigger tires, bigger motors, more horsepower. Uh, this is the uh, deluxe F-150, and there you can see the interior of the, uh, and again with that phony dash bezel, comparing it to the Endurance, which is much sleeker and, and better, I think. And again, the dual climate controls, which I believe the Endurance has as well. And the same kind of doors, uh, very similar layout. The screen is the main difference, I think. And um, there's there's walking into the endurance, and so you can you can compare those, and you can compare the back seats. They're very very similar, very much the same uh, vehicle. Uh, we're looking underneath the Lordstown here, and this is this same contraption is in the uh, endurance. There's your back seat there in the endurance. They got cloth inserts. Uh, now I'm going to pause this. That should give you an idea of that. And I'm going to stop recording right now, and I'm going to go into the next section. Okay, this is MXUX. I'm going to try to go through this. Uh, uh, the difference between the F-150 Endurance moving target at Ford. Ford is hiding in a lot of information on the truck, the exact battery size and the weight specifically. But you can see we got a big advantage for Ford here with the cost. It's $15,000 cheaper. So advantage... Ford. Um, they get 230. I'm thinking 225 on this battery, 226. And I'm thinking uh, the endurance is 250 and maybe another 10%, another 25, 275. I think the endurance is going to win on this. This is, uh, you know, let's say 260. Okay with a smaller kilowatt battery it's going to charge faster the total cost of ownership over the life of the truck which a fleet guy is going to pay attention to is going to show that this is going to save them a ton of money and it's going to be cheaper to charge and it's going to have more range and i think this is the main reason they are going to take well one of the main reasons they're going to choose the uh, lordstown motors they both have the same charge time at 220 amp they both have the same towing. Now, this is another reason the uh, uh, fleet managers are going to choose the uh, Lawrencetown Endurance. Solid truck axle. They got SUV extension uh, suspension in, in uh, the Ford. No way. They don't, they're not going to want that. This is for towing. Okay? So, moving on. Let's take this down to the next. Now, uh, uh, here's another thing that, uh, oh, shoot, that's uh, not what I want. Uh, sorry, guys. I'm just going to do it without it then. <clears throat> the wheel size for the Ford is 18 inch. You got to, these are small, thin tires for rolling resistance. That isn't going to be able to take any bumps, an 18 inch tire. They're going to change. They're going to have all kind of tire wear problems on this car. They're too narrow. They're too small. Uh, I think this is another plus for Lordstown Motors. Okay, so you got the solid truck axle. You got the charge time. You got the, the wheel size. Okay, now let's go to motors. Two. They got 426 horsepower in the two motor in the fleet model of the uh, Ford. Lordstown, 600. This is another plus. So cheaper, better, bigger tires, more horsepower, okay? Now, this is where we're having a problem. The, the truck that, the Ford, the truck uh, that uh, Biden drove is 6,400 tons. That's three tons, 400 pounds, okay? It's a ton heavier. 
than the uh, uh, endurance. Now, with with the other, this is this is something I was trying to figure out. It's very hard to figure out knowing what what their extra range battery if it, is. It 192 kilowatts? Is it 150 kilowatts? Whatever, we don't know, and uh, and we don't know the weight. But again, the uh, the endurance is going to be lighter. I don't think it matters what batteries in the Ford. The endurance is still going to be a lighter truck. Okay, that's another plus. Okay, so the LMC is 15k more expensive. Negative. 30 mile, 30 miles more range on a battery that is four kilowatts smaller. Lower charging costs. Lower co total cost of ownership. More efficient truck. This is what's going to win them all the fleet sales. Uh, LMC has 174 more horsepower than the Ford standard battery. Uh, two inch bigger wheels and tires and it weighs less. Uh, four motors for the LMC. Ford has two. This is another plus for the uh, fleet owner. Hundreds less moving drive taint repair parts. Ford's got all those CV joints and U-joints and the, the, the rear end on that is a mechanical uh, differential with electronic control hooked to an electric motor and independent suspension with all the connecting CV joints and drive, you know, LMC has none of that. And this is another one that's going to win, win over the fleet guys because they know solid rear axle. Ford has SUV suspension. So the 224 F light one uh, F 150 Lightning actually uh, has the battery alone is 1800 pounds now I believe that's but we don't know if that's the long range or the short range I believe this is the long range so the battery basically weighs a ton 200 pounds short of a ton okay uh, and the lightning again I'm, I'm guessing with the big battery but they don't really designate this we don't really know uh it weighs the electric uh, f-150 weighs 6500 pounds 35 percent more than the gas powered model so it weighs even more than the than the ice 35 percent more than the ice f-150 uh 1800 pound battery so i mean weight efficiency sturdiness uh, the uh, drivetrain, I mean, the endurance has a lot of uh, pluses. Okay, and I just want to talk a little bit about increased weight here. <clears throat> the increased weight and capacity of electric vehicles have several different impacts on the working of the vehicle. All right, deterioration and acceleration, inertia, rolling resistance. Increase in load on the assemblies and, the li and their lifespan decre decreases. So this is this is all those connecting drive rods and and uh, CV joints and so forth. Increased load. Lifespan decreases. Okay, uh, decreasing the amount of load that can be transported. That's why they have these scales in the Ford, because uh, they're they're gonna they're gonna track how much they load these trucks up, and if you uh, uh, overload them and and blow up the rear suspension. They're going to look up the computer chart and they're going to say, oh, well, you overloaded that. So this is the uh, warranty's uh, uh, voided. I'm, I guarantee you. Uh, and uh, change in braking parameters. And again, they're not letting anybody drive this Lightning because it's a cement pot truck. Probably can't even stop. You know, you probably got to stand on the brakes. <clears throat> The trucks will be so heavy as an un, 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 unfortunate side. It will, trucks are so heavy. It will wear down roads, get in the air pollution, and harm whoever is an unfortunate enough to get in the way. You know, that's another thing. It's going to be a tank. So anyway, really, the only the only disadvantage uh, the Ford has, uh, the uh, Endurance has, in my opinion, is it's 15k more expensive right now. But it's also going to be available. This F-150 Lightning, this is a prototype. This isn't a PPV. That thing you saw what that guy was showing, it's not ready. Um, 
So when is the Ford going to be available? I don't know. Next year, the year after, who knows, right? The uh, endurance is going to be available at the end of this year, limited, and, and certainly next year. Now, as far as the uh, 15K, uh, these fleet guys are going to have um, – they're going to have spreadsheets and they're going to have this all worked out and they're going to be able to look at the range and and the tire wear and the repair estimates and the man hours needed for repairs and and uh, the total cost of ownership over the life of the vehicle and i think they're going to be able to justify this 15k more expensive plus they're going to get you know whatever 7500 off right and plus state uh, thing, uh, state incentives as well. So it's going to take this price down, perhaps to 40k. Um, so I think it's a no-brainer for the fleet guys, especially since the Lightning. I mean, you you can't even put your hand, uh, your your fingers on on what's going on with that thing. Now the uh, the consumers, what have they said? They want the bigger battery in the pro model, and Ford has already said they're not going to ship it with that. They want to be able to power their home with the pro model. Can't do it without the bigger battery. Uh, the price they they like, but even saving 10k with the um, with the uh, uh, incentives, they would put the 10k back into the truck for the bigger battery. And uh, they like the, the interior and the vinyl seats. So uh, what they're talking about is mainly uh, on the Ford, the consumers want the bigger battery. And the bigger battery is going to make that pro model weigh 6,500 pounds. Okay. 35% more than a gas-powered model. Okay. That's a heavy truck. If they can't put an 80 amp circuit in their garage to charge it at home, you know, 80 amp is a big circuit. If they don't have the power, an electrician has to tell you that. But it's going to take them uh, 13 hours to charge that truck. 13 hours. Okay. So uh, maybe not overnight. So they may, they may not want to get what they're wishing for. Anyway, that's my take on it. Again, I think, uh, I think the LMC is, uh, is on track to do, get these, capture a large part of these fleet sales. And who knows? Maybe they can come out with a cheaper consumer model. Who knows? Two motor, two motor model. Anyway, that's MXUX. I hope you liked the video. Thanks a lot. All right, guys, I hope you liked the video. Some new information here. Wordstown just put out a big gob of new professional promotionals on the web. You can check them out on YouTube. You'll see them there everywhere. Um, thanks for watching, guys. I need a like and a subscribe from you. Also, enjoy the comments. I read every one. Pass it on. Make a comment. And smash that subscribe button, will you? Uh, so we can get the word out on Lord's Town. Thanks for watching.